Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla. I am IATF qualified author doing audit for the automotive sector for the last 18 years. I am again back with a very very interesting topic and that topic is what is causal factors. Well, in general, in our day-to-day life, sometimes, you know, we use this analogy that whenever I'm in stress, my weight increases. Now, what is the link or what is the relation between the stress and the weight? Now, the link here is that whenever I'm under stress, I eat a lot of junk food. And when I eat a lot of junk food, that increases my weight. So, this is one factor which may not be the root cause for something like what you can say that weight increase but then one of the causal factor which is there. So to talk basically about the definition of causal factor, so by definition, when we say causal factor, basically it is a major unplanned, unintended contributor to an incident. It could be a negative event or an undesirable condition, which if eliminated would have either prevented the occurrence of the incident or reduced its severity or frequency. Now, one very interesting thing to understand here is that causal factors are not the root causes, but one of the contributing factor for the root causes. The most important part of the definition of the causal factor is the word contributor. Because when we talk about contributor, it means the causal factor is not the single factor that is driving the event, but instead a causal factor is one of the few influences. So it means that event could still have occurred maybe without the causal factor. So when I talk about the key difference between causal factor and the root cause, one thing which is important to understand here is that when we talk about root cause, it is a primary reason that what is a cause that because of which this particular event has occurred. But when we talk about causal factor, it can be a secondary or a tertiary, tertiary driver which may have resulted in that. To give you an example to make things understand, say for example, that you pack the material and it is ready for dispatch and it is going to the customer. There is a certain time frame within which material should reach to the customer. And during the transit, there was a massive traffic jam. And this traffic jam is going to be there for hours and hours and nobody knows that how much time it will take to get over. Now, one thing is that the truck should wait there till the jam is over and it may result in delivery failure. Now, the second option could be the driver may think of taking an alternate route and then reach to the customer on time. Now, assume the customer, the driver decided to take an alternate route. Now, the alternate route had a lot of potholes and because of that, the material which was there inside got damaged because there was a lot of movement. And when it reached to the customer, the customer found that there is a lot of variation in the dimension and uh, visual, there are a lot of impact that has happened because of that. Now, nobody has perceived that this particular thing can happen because there is a standard route and a person is going from that particular route. So there is never a problem with respect to dimension or visual effect. But this particular causal factor has resulted in this particular problem. Now, we cannot think about that this kind of things can happen because in at times we say that we are doing FMEA a failure mode and effect analysis and that we consider all the possible failures. But can we imagine something like that can happen? For example, tsunami. Now, who can imagine that tsunami can come and if tsunami is coming, what actions we are going to take? But here, one very important thing to understand with respect to the causal factor is that what actions that we can take so that either we can prevent the occurrence or if we cannot prevent the occurrence, how we can minimize the impact. So as I took the example of tsunami, so in this particular case, well, we cannot have, we do not have any control over tsunami, but then we can have some sort of a siren system that can give an indication to us that yes, something like that is happening so that we can run away from there and we can take all the other actions so that we can minimize the damage from there. So that brings another important thing that what are the necessary conditions by which we can identify that whether there is any causal factor or not. So first is we can have a direct observation. Second is we can use the, this option of so what and by asking all these questions we can find that. And the third one is we can ask a three question method which is what is the cause, 
what is its effects and what are the intervening factor which can result into that particular thing. So, for example, uh, as I took the previous example, the cause is traffic jam. The effect is the material got damaged as the vehicle took the route where the road condition was bad. And what was the intervening factor? The intervening factor was how to reach the customer location on time because we have committed to the customer. Now, that brings another important thing that this causal factor is there. But what we can do to minimize such kind of events to happen? So, there can be few questions that we can ask that can help us with respect to that. So, the first very important question is that what was the incident that can help us to understand with respect to this. Second is what was the key causal factor for the incident that the incident has happened and what was the reason with respect to that. Like we said that it was uh, the, the bad road condition which has resulted in that. Now, the third question is what have we wanted to achieve? Well, we wanted to be on time that is what exactly we want to achieve. The fourth question is was there any opportunity to avoid or minimize the incident? Well, yes, we could have waited there and uh, till the time the traffic jam is over so that we don't uh, need to go to any alternate route wherein the road condition is bad. So, that is another thing to do. Now, the next possible question is, was there any 4M, man, machine, material, method, failure, which resulted in the incident? Well, in this case, you can say that this is a method that we followed which was not approved but since we wanted to reach to the customer, that is why we followed an alternate route. The next possible question is, was there any future possibility of any similar incident to happen which has not yet observed or acted upon? So, now it is a time to think about all the upcoming future causal factors which can happen. Say for example, today the material may have got damaged. Now, tomorrow with uh, this particular condition, there could be a possibility that the QR code which is there on the product on the packing material, it may rub against each other and that get uh, damaged. And then when the material is reaching to the customer end, the scanner is not able to scan the QR code. So, that can be the another factor which can come in future. The next possible question is that what was the key cause which led to the failure? So, we already talked about that. And the next and the last question is which failure in the forum that is man, machine, material and method that could have resulted in making the incident worse. So, by asking all these questions, what we are doing is that first of all, we are trying to understand that what are the causal factors and what can be done in future so that we can avoid such kind of causal factors to come. So, if I do a summary, what I did is that I talked about what exactly is a causal factor. Then I talked about that how this causal factor is different from the root cause. Then the third one was how to identify the causal factors. And then we talked one example with respect to the traffic jam. And then what are the possible questions we can ask to reduce or we can avoid this kind of causal factors. My next video will be about what exactly is the poison test that we do with respect to the employees or the inspectors who are working in the production area. Regularly, I am getting a lot of feedback from your side and they are helping me to understand your expectations. So, please do continue that. And in case you are liking these kind of videos and blogs, you can always share with your friends and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and my website bhavimangla.com. And in case you want to understand a little bit more about this particular video, you will find a link below. If you click that, you will find a blog there and there you will find this information in much more detail. Thank you.